the complete lack of capacity to realise that the straits that the Europe finds itself in now are self-inflicted by the design of the euro. And everything's about trying to make continue with, with the way it was laid down uh, without saying, look, there's something fundamentally wrong in the design. Surely you can see that. And, and the inability to see that uh, was what just left me depressed because, first of all, you, you not only do you have a denial that there are problems with the euro, you have an inability to reform it even once you do get that level of acceptance because the way it's been set up really is to be to exclude the populace from making decisions about the economic direction of the, of, the, of, the, of the continent. And that would be okay if the, that direction was successful, but it's not. And you have denial combined with a, a structure that makes it impossible to reform the damn thing. And I just think it's just, it's, it's a totally depressing state. The only way out is to snap it, which you no know, one wants that to happen. But I think the only, only resolution is going to be somebody breaking the euro. Yeah. And what is the fundamental flaw then in your view? Oh, it's too many to count, but the, the, the fundamental flaws really come down to not understanding the role of money, not understanding how both the private sector and the public sector can create money and setting it up so that the public sector is unable to do that, meaning that all the money creation responsibility in that sense falls on the private sector. When you have private banks creating money, they simultaneously create debt for the recipient of that money as well. Yeah. And what that means is that the only way you get an advantage, the only way you can get a apparent increase in your net financial worth out of that is to go and speculate on rising asset prices. And that's what people do. It sets off basically housing bubbles, share market bubbles, which crash at some point because ultimately you can't, the populace can't continue borrowing money indefinitely. At some point either the public or the banks stop being willing to borrow or to lend. And when that does, you have a crash. Yeah. The, future of the future of the Eurozone looks pretty dim unless uh, primarily Germany changes its stance. Uh, Germany has also been in the lead in trying to impose austerity on the peripheral countries, the South and Ireland, uh, which is kind of ironic if you look back at recent history. I mean, after the Second World War, uh, Germany had a huge debt. It was forgiven. You know, that's how Germany was able to recover. Uh, Europe essentially forgave the debt. In 1953, you know, the Federal Republic was practically collapsing, and it appealed for um, debt relief, essentially, from Europe and was given considerable assistance at uh, restructuring and cutting its debt. Well, you know, after that, Germany was able to grow its way out of the crisis, became the industrial center of, of Europe, the major industrial center of Europe. And now Germany's in the lead in trying to prevent similar policies in the countries that have been pretty much harmed by uh, the way the the specific way the eurozone developed including by german banks so the the problem in the south is mostly a banking crisis uh, in spain for example the budget was in good shape in 2007 uh, uh, the collapse was uh, basically a banking scandal same in ireland and uh, the, it's a two-way thing, the banking scandal. It's the Spanish and Irish banks, but it's also the lenders, like the Bundesbank and uh, Deutsche Bank and so on. So it's a two-way affair, and it's a, essentially a banking crisis, not a government crisis. And the consequences are just what you described in Germany. Uh, in fact, Mario Draghi, head of the ECB, uh, stated it pretty frankly in an interview to... The Wall Street Journal. He said, uh, "The social contract is dead." You know, well, you know that's the consequence of austerity. Uh, just on pure economic grounds, austerity is no way to grow up, get out of a crisis. Let me begin with a clarification. Are you saying that if the EU continues on its current course, it's finished? It is utterly unsustainable. The eurozone is the core of the European Union. And the euro is a currency designed to fail, uh, not intentionally, unintentionally perhaps. And if the euro fails, the European Union is, is gone. Mm -hmm. as a result. It doesn't necessarily mean, I'm not prognosticating the disintegration of the euro, but what I am saying is that, take France for instance. France is condemned to stagnate in the long term, given the relative structure of its economy uh, and that of Germany. When you fuse together 
uh, s such disparate economies by means of a fixed exchange rate regime, uh, then France, whatever President Macron does, is going to, 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 to be a, a cesspool of and can uh, be competitive discontent. It, will be, it can never be competitive but and can never create the jobs that are necessary in order to stabilize the political economy of France. It's been three years since you wrote the, uh, that famous book. That famous book, yes. Uh, austerity, the history of a dangerous idea. Uh, in this time, austerity is no more an idea. It's pretty much uh, the major policy that have been in effect throughout Europe. Uh, and the question that, uh, <laughs> that arises from this is, is it reversible now? So, all right, so let's think about it this way. Was austerity the policy or was austerity a side effect? So what have we found out recently from the paper that was done by the German Business School? that according to their estimates, a full 95% of the cash that went to Greece round trip through Greece and went straight back to creditors, which in plain English is banks, right? So public taxpayers' money was pushed through Greece to uh, basically bail out banks. And part of that was an adjustment that had to happen on the Greek balance sheet. So austerity becomes a side effect of a general policy of bank bailouts that nobody wants to own, right? So that's really what happened, okay? Now, put that to one side. That's done. That's over. So the question is, where do we go next?